Now, this is a bit high for me. Um, I'd like you to retopologize it. I'd like you to go over these folds by hand. I'm going to use... Um, I'm going to use the retopologize function here. And... Uh, we can go a bit higher, you know. Um, face uniformity we can increase maybe. Now by increasing face uniformity, some of your wrinkles will not be uh, captured. And for me, for now, this is enough. Now, what I would expect uh, from a more finalized version is for these wrinkles to be there as well. So if we go to our original mesh and we make it live, then we can get into this retopologized mesh and start cutting through it, introducing more uh, subdivisions where we need them. Also with the quad draw, if I in get my soft selection going, I can actually align some of these edge loops a little bit better to the curvature that we get here, right? And then I can cut alongside uh, some of that curvature, right? If I get in here with the multi-cut, I can kind of get in and create a bit more subdivisions around areas that I want to enhance. So here, for example, whoops, I can move these down and then multi-cut here, or from here maybe even would be better. Right? And then get something like this going on. Right? And you see we're starting to get these uh, areas of curvature to come through a little bit better. Same here, we can come in and start creating some extra subdivisions or extra definition for those areas. Um, then you can get in here and adjust them more individually, of course. If need be, maybe here we can kind of reorient this to maybe collapse uh, here instead of here, you know, and keep, keep this going. In any case, now that we have this, right, we can, uh, let's see, just want to smooth this a little bit so we don't have huge faces. But in any case, now that I have this, I can start growing some hair on it. Um, but another thing I want to do is reconstruct my UVs. Now, there's a couple ways. I could just create UVs, right? I can go into UV editor and create a camera-based projection, if I have it selected, of course. And then, and then unfold it, and there you go. It's a very simple process. Another way, if you want to preserve, you can just transfer attributes from your... Um, old mesh to the new mesh, right? I can go here, uh, mesh, transfer attributes, and then I want to get current UV set using the world space, and you see we get quite a decent match. So, depends on what you want to do. I can hide this, I can concentrate on this, and start um, creating my X-Gen. Now, I'll create, now that I have UVs, let's give this a name. This is going to be my pelt. I'm going to create a interactive groom splines. This is fine. You see I've already been messing around here. CV count, we want it to be 4 and no less. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Density of 1, length of 2. Width, we can go 2. Let's apply. So what do we get? We get this really thick. Close this. Get get this really thick cards, which is cool. That's kind of what we want. Now, if I go into my attribute editor, 
I, I want to have both my attribute editor and my um, let's see if I can drop it here and my xgen. Now you see whatever I select will be updated here in the attribute editor, so I kind of need it. Now first thing I want to do, <coughs> I'm going to disable my face camera setting and I'm going to increase the length so I can play with the scale here, so like 1.3 maybe, I don't know, something like that. Get a bit of extra width for this outfit, uh, maybe 1.2, that's good, right? We can hide the fur. I might actually stick to one. I think that will do. Cool. Next. Um, next, what I want. The width seems all right. Right? We can always go into here. You know, go a bit wider. You know. Play around with this, the width of our cards. But the main thing I want to do is I want to groom these. You see I have a brush and I can start grooming and you see they're starting to crash through the body which is not cool. This is not what I want. So in order to avoid that I want to collide with meshes to be activated. And now you see we get a bit of a nicer effect. Another thing I want to do, once I get a bit of, you see the orientation is all over the place, right? Because it doesn't align to the camera anymore. So we need to set the orientation by hand. And I'm doing this on purpose because, um, because, let's kind of groom these guys towards this silhouette here because um, you know it's not going to be happening live in our render scene so might as well align these guys by hand there we go um, they need to be facing away from the normals of the mesh so in order to do that we go to this orient or rotate brush and then I want to align to surface so I'm just gonna go over them and you see wherever I go they start to align to the surface unless if there's an area where I didn't brush them previously so here I'll try and brush them into a certain direction and then they go and XGen is going to use the direction to try and align them to the surface so there we go we get something like that. So all it's going to do is take the orientation that I'm giving it and it's going to try and do its best to align that to the surface and kind of change the shape of the cards. Because of that, you see here, move it down, orient it uh, on that angle, right? Then get in here with the uh, orient again. So I'm blanking here a little bit. And we got something like this. Here you see we have a bit of a mess because I changed the orientation of these cards. So in that case, you see they're going up here, here they're like they don't really know where to go. And then if I get my orientation, like it tries to interpolate these factors. Next what I can do is just smooth them a bit. This is the smoothing brush. There we go. Instead of being curved, which there, there won't be anyway, we'll simplify the cards to like a single face most probably. Would be the healthiest uh, way to do this. I'm just going to go over and smooth all of these guys. Now what I can uh, replace that diversity with instead is just a bit of noise over everything so kind of noise the orientation of the cars themselves so I'll add a modifier uh, it's going to be noise and then uh just reduce the um noise settings here just the magnitude can be lowered 
something like this. And there we go, we got something decent. Uh, you can definitely spend more time on it, you see. I, mean, I could actually get in here and lengthen some of these uh, if I uh, r get my strength to be a bit less. You see here we can get in and kind of lengthen some of these cards, get those torn edges to come out nicely, eh? Uh, here on the inside I can kind of lengthen some of these and just keep in mind obviously that uh, you want to set the directionality nicely before you do all of that fun stuff but you can see we get quite a nice result that would take us forever to do by hand so keep that in mind right um and we can still adjust some of these, right? I can get in here, move them in this direction, and then reorient. You see, and then now uh, they're reorienting into that direction a little bit better. And then I can smooth them. There we go. Got something like this, and then I can scale them. And I got something like this. Cool. Let's say we're done at this point. I take my fur. I go to um, generate, convert interactive groom to polygons. And now here we want to combine our mesh. Uh, I don't need width ramp at this point. And UV layout we can go two by two. I think is more than enough. No joints. Boom. Done. Uh, we can hide. Our fur, there's our mesh. Get it out of this group. No need for that. That's gonna be our uh let's call this fur cards. There we go. Now at this point we want to attach some sort of a shader to it so we can see our uh cards. So I'll assign a new Material, and we're gonna go old school uh, with like a Lambert. Now, when it comes to transparency, I can use a file, and I can use that file that I created previously for you. And just drop it here. There we go, there's our alpha. Now, you know, we might want to adjust the UVs a little bit, but you see the way we created our uh, let's see the picture if I can There we go. Good old buggy Maya. Um, so you see it kind of lends itself to what we wanted to do anyway. But the only difference is, in this case, I think what I'd like is to have all of them kind of sit on top of each other. So I'll just select all of them. And then I'll just... Um, uh, not align. Arrange, maybe. And then I can just stack them on top of each other, if I can. Take a little coffee break here. <laughs> and we're back. So, no crash. Happy me. Okay, so at this point, we got something like this. As you can see. Uh, some of the directionality is not looking amazing in some areas here. So we might want to come back and smooth this out. So I'll get rid of this. Bring this back and smooth out these areas the best I can, if I can. Let's see if it works. Okay, it moves them. It should orient them, there we go. Just make sure everything is oriented. And then I'll run the smooth brush over everything just one more time. I don't want to have uh, segmentation 
I don't want to have any rotation within the card. So, looks like I'm getting decent looking cards now. Again, generate, convert, um, 2 by 2 There we go. And again, we can hide our fur. Look at our UVs here. Now, this time I'll just select a bunch of shells and stack shells. Hopefully it will go a tiny bit faster, but I'm not holding my breath. Okay, I'm gonna pause again and come back when they're stacked. And we're back again. Now... Let's see if we can get our image to come back. Uh, but at this point, I'm just going to move them to the left top quadrant and just scale them down a bit, blind. Uh, select the geo. Oh yeah, and I, I think I assigned my material. So let's assign my material. So there should be some sort of maybe Lambert 2. Yeah, there we go. Lambert 2 is the one. Let's just arrange them. And we get something like this. Now, if we were to use um, on our mesh the same kind of material, so for now, if I assign Lambert 1, the color should match, right? And then if I was to take my normals, let's get this guy out of here. Let's do cards, whatever name you want to give, just give a name. Um, so if I do this and I transfer attribute, and this time vertex normal through the world position is what I do, I'm starting to get a fuzzy look. Now our current issue that I can tell. First of all, we have to change our re render settings here. So instead of object sorting, we want to go to depth peeling and set it all the way to 1. Now, we get a better result. Secondly, you see here, because of the way the cards are arranged, we actually want to rotate them. So we either go back into a ca our cards and do that, or uh, we do it manually now with like individual cards, which, you know, obviously will be more annoying. So another thing we can do is go in there and just like align them, rotate them. So instead of facing forward, they'd be facing sideways, right? So something you can do before you export them. And then the next thing we would want to do is when we look at our uh, cards here, uh, basically what we want is the shape to be slightly different. Now, let's take a look here. You see we have very rectangular look for those border cards, right? And if we look at our UVs, we have all of these UVs. Uh, one thing that's very easy that we can do is if we go to Photoshop at this point and we start playing with the hair alpha file, we can change the shape a little bit to reduce the rectangularity of our card. So, if I make it nice and soft, and I get in here and I just erase these areas. Cool. And I save it. Then I go here and I uh, try and reload my texture. Let's see if that does anything. Also looks like it, they might be flipped on, let's see, they are actually flipped. So another thing we might, <laughs> might want to do 
is uh, rotate our UVs to correlate, so I can hold J here, rotate them to correlate with the directionality. So now we got something that looks a little bit more forgiving. I'll go here and I'll actually undo some of my changes. Um, just apply a bit less of it, then save and reload. We get a result that's a little bit more agreeable. Now at this point, another thing we can do is uh, duplicate one of these. We can push it out a bit so we can see it. There's our mesh. We can uh, isolate it, set our pivot point, and bake it. Have it exposed here. Well, that's cool. So now, if we make our pelt live, we can uh, select our mesh, and we can start introducing some new cards. Now, at this point, I can go into my UVs, and adjust my um, my alpha and another thing I can do is I can mirror my alpha maybe to the other side perhaps that will um, that will give me a different directionality that I would be happy with right so um See in the transform, maybe we can like do a bit of mirroring. Mm. If I go to the tool settings here and I scale, and I want to cancel the prevent prevent <coughs> negatives scale and there I can do it by hand so now we can start playing around with some of these forms that we can introduce right so you see we keep snapping to the surface perhaps we want it to go a bit longer perhaps we want to scale it down but we can now start introducing some of those forms into our mesh here. Now I'm doing this manually. There are ways to do this also uh, more automatically. Now once we're done, we can select all of this. Uh, we can combine, recombine it, and then transfer attributes again. Right from our belt. Let's move the line over top. And there we go. Mesh, transfer attributes, and we get a more continuous look in pelt. So you can see uh, it's a relatively easy process, and we're getting something that looks decent. Now we have to make sure that around the borders we are better aligned, and that's why I asked you to create those manual cards. Now uh, you can combine them with this and get a more interesting result. You see here, because we're creating these cards generatively, we're not getting a perfect result, right? So we can always get in here and try and improve on this. And also go back and forth and maybe create another variation on this uh, pattern that is fully opaque on the inside. Now making it fully opaque on the inside, so if I get in here with a paintbrush and I make it soft, and I increase the spacing, and I increase the size, I can get in here now, oops, there we go, and just add some of that opaqueness so now, when I'm using this brush to create uh, more hairs, 
and I update it here, you see we have this opaqueness now. And I can move it in and you see we have a better transition. But obviously this is a very, very rough solution at this point. Like we can spend obviously more time in the grooming process. I just try, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give you an understanding of what happens once we're committed to the groom. So before we commit to the groom, we might want to consider these things. Like here, the orientation, I can see through the cards. Not the end of the world because we have so many, right? But in any case, definitely something to consider. Now, another thing we can do is we can align our diffuse uh, with our alpha instead of getting separate UV sets for that. Um, and in that case, we don't have to worry about placement or anything, uh, sorry, about uh, transferring the uh, UVs on our, and having multiple UV sets here. But then we won't have access to having multiple, um, to having multiple colors in our, uh, in our belt. So to have like some sort of a gradient, right? So there we go. A nice rough kind of initial fur and not too far actually from where we want to go with it. And then with a bit of extra work, especially around the edges, we can make it look better. Um, I think that's going to be it for now. And then uh, for the look dev, we can do another installation.